Higher than expected inflation sends stocks tumbling. I'm Lisa Bernhard with Reuters, and I'm joined today by Rob Hayworth of U.S. Bank Wealth Management. Rob, this is the third month in a row that we've seen prices tick up higher. We had the Consumer Price Index out today. What is keeping prices higher specifically? Yeah, Lisa, uh, thank you for having us. It's a great question. Right now, really what we're seeing is still elevated services inflation and still elevated housing inflation. So those two things, especially where we're seeing short supplies, right? We still have short inventory, short housing inventories. And as we heard in the jobs report, we still don't have enough people hired yet. Uh, th those are the things really keeping inflation higher. And what about gas prices as well? Aren't they taking a toll? I mean, I know that supply has been limited. Isn't that right? Yeah, uh, gasoline prices are certainly ticking a little bit higher. Part of it is we're seeing a seasonal shift here where we're getting ready for that summer driving season and summer travel season, which is when we often see peak demand. Uh, but some of it is we're seeing relatively tight supplies. Now, today's report from the uh, Energy Information Administration indicated that uh, inventories are rising, but certainly uh, supply concerns, especially given the conflict in the Gaza Middle East region, uh, is starting to weigh on uh, push up prices. So as I mentioned, this is the third month in a row where we've seen prices start to creep back up. Of course, inflation is down from 9% annual rate back in the summer of 2022, sits so now at about 3.5%. But it is the third month in a row that prices have creeped back up. Are markets, which at the moment, all three of Wall Street's main indexes are down 1% or more, are markets overreacting? I think it's tough to say markets are overreacting at this point because uh, they're really having to react to what is a higher interest rate scenario. So we've seen the 10-year Treasury move up past 4.5%. We've seen the two-year Treasury rate start to move up as markets really anticipate that we may not get even three rate cuts this year. It may be closer to one or two. And I think that's been a real adjustment for markets in terms of uh, valuations and price earnings, multiple pricing. So if we don't see the first rate cut from the Fed until September, or if we see no rate cuts at all this year, how does that change your outlook for corporate earnings, which kick off Friday, first quarter corporate earnings, and for the consumer? Well, I think it does make it tougher for the consumer. But as we talked about a little bit ago, with the labor market so tight, so much demand for labor, even with higher borrowing costs, consumers are benefiting from very low unemployment and still rising wages. Wage growth was still up 4.1% uh, year over year in, according to the jobs report last Friday. So we're still seeing good uh, good wage growth for consumers that they can maybe withstand some of these rate hikes. I think the challenge is as they have to move through and refinance, uh, it could pre present a little bit of a headwind to them. I think from a business perspective, there's a real difference between small and large. Large companies, really aren't having to come back much to the market. They have much longer maturities on their debts. Uh, so they're not requiring as much funding. Their earnings may be okay. And that's what we're seeing in expectations for now with uh, S&P 500 earnings expectations for the full year of 2024 over $242. Uh, it's smaller companies that may have a tougher time where they're having to come to market sooner to refinance their debt and may be subject to those much higher interest rates sooner, which could present a real cost challenge for them in their earnings picture. So what's your investment philosophy going forward? Has it changed? We've not changed yet. We're still fairly neutral in this market. And what we see right now is we're, we're worried about sticky inflation, but the growth picture is still very good. We're also uh, paying attention to improvements in manufacturing. We saw manufacturing PMIs last week tick higher as well. So it looks like the economy is doing okay for now. What we're going to worry about is if inflation really persists and stays sticky or starts to accelerate later in the year. And then we may have to make adjustments relative to look for more inflation sensitive assets in portfolios. But we don't think we need to do that just yet. Banks report on Friday to kick off earnings season. And JP Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon, in his investor letter this week, said that there's the possibility that interest rates could spike again as high as 8% perhaps. Do you agree with that? And how do companies and consumers prepare for the unexpected? Well, yeah, our base case is not that interest rates re reach 8%, particularly when we think about the 10-year treasury. But certainly if we're seeing higher inflation, 
that is a meaningful risk, particularly uh, if we need to embed higher inflation expectations and in interest rates. Inflation expectations for investors have been running around two and a half percent with the 10 year treasury around just under four and a half percent. So that would take a pretty significant ramp in inflation expectations to get there. So we don't think we we get there. I think the challenge for uh, investors and consumers in that higher borrowing cost environment is how do they make sure they get ahead of those rate increases? So start uh, uh, managing kind of uh, your your debt load, your debt maturities, and think about refinancing a little sooner maybe uh, to avoid those potential spikes. From an investor perspective, we still think you should move out along the curve away from cash. Uh, but it's not anything someone needs to do very quickly.